Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new project on this channel. The making of a super battleship. We are going to take the ship shown here on the screen, the one and only Satsuma, and we are going to 3D print it. And this is not gonna be a regular build video. Instead, I'm going to break down the process of designing all the different parts that are needed. I'm going to show the work one needs to put in to get to a 3D printable model. We are going to start with a completely blank slate. So stay tuned for a long and interesting journey. Before we start designing anything, we need to break down the model first. All of the parts that we are going to design need to be 3D printable. This might sound obvious at first, but there's actually a little bit more to it. So, I have here the model of the Satsuma in the port. If we divide it very roughly, we can separate it into the following parts. We have the hull, we have the superstructure, and then we have all of the movable parts like the guns, and the rangefinders. Most of these parts will be too big to be printed in one go, so they need to be divided. For example, the hull will probably have to be printed in five different parts. Then we have the superstructure. It might be able to be printed in one go, but I would like to break it down a little bit. Let's get into the movable parts and list them. We have the main rangefinders here and here. So make that two. Then we also have a lot of secondary rangefinders. A small one here and another small one here. So that makes four in total. Then we have all of those small secondary rangefinders here on the sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Times two, because on both on both sides, makes twenty-two. Plus the other four, we are at twenty-six. But that's not all. If we look here, we have another four. So we have 30 rangefinders. Moving on with the AA. We have on both sides one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, of these smaller AA guns, so 18 of them. Then the main guns, we have four of them. They can be broken down like this. We need one part for the gun house. For each one we need two barrels. And since we want to elevate the guns, we need some sort of bearing. Then they need a, gun, a turret ring with a mechanism to accommodate for the bearing of the barrel and probably even a cover to make them fix in place. Then we have these secondary guns with a gun house, so there's six of them. And we have these here, two on each side, makes four. But then we also have these secondary guns these open top ones. We have four on each side, make that eight. I want them to be able to rotate and elevate their guns as well. So this is going to be a little bit challenging because they are very detailed and they are open top. That's it for the movable parts. Let's now get into the fixed parts. We have those secondary barbettes here. They will be separate parts. 
the main barbettes for the main guns, however, they will probably be integrated into the hull. Then the superstructure. There is so much detail on it that it cannot be printed in one go. Especially this area gives me a lot of headache. Because of all those different turrets here. Or these elevated platforms. For the lack of a better word. Then we have this area here. I would like to separate the funnel from the rest of the superstructure but this will be challenging as well because we have here these platforms for the signal lamps and this gangway which are intersecting with the funnel here and they are leading into this platform which is intersecting with the main tower and then we have here this staircase to this other platform so this is going to be a challenge as well. And let's not forget all of the parts need to be designed in a way that they can be 3D printed and I want them to be accessible so I can paint them later on after I assembled them. Or I need to paint them before I assemble but this is something I need to come up with on the fly when I design them. Now on to the hull. This is going to be tough because the hull, as you can see, is riveted. And I want to model the rivets as well. Yeah, I know it might sound crazy, but I want that attention to detail. One last word about the overall process. I'm going to start at the top and then work my way down. Why, I'm going to explain later. I am going to start with the rangefinders. I'm not going to show every detail that I'm modeling but hopefully enough that you get a rough idea of what I'm doing. I have imported reference images of the first rangefinders into a new Blender file. Then I started with a lot of basic shapes, mainly cylinders, moving them roughly into position and scaling them up and down as I need them. For the main part of the rangefinder there's already a lot of tweaking going on. Moving on to the arms, I don't know a better word for it, that extend out of the rangefinder. It's basically just another cylinder with a few tweaks here and there and a cube where I beveled the upper edges. As you can see, even for, or I should say, especially for complex elements like a rangefinder, it is very important to break it down into different simple parts like cubes and cylinders and just combine them the right way. So if you intend to try something like this, Remember to make it as easy on yourself as possible. And breaking down complex objects into simple shapes is one of the most useful skills you can acquire for that. The plentiful moments where I had to take another look at the model and think about how to break it down are not shown in this video. I cut them out. But since you requested a breakdown of how I designed the models, here's a question for you. How detailed do you want me to get? How technical do you want these videos to be? What would you like to see more or less of? Please let me know in the comments. For now, I try to take a balanced approach. So for these details, it's again the same procedure over and over again. A few cubes here and there, then insert some of the faces, extrude it in, add another few cubes, extrude it out, bevel the edges, using a mirror modifier and that's it. And then you just have it and you can use it over and over again, as I did here. The same goes for these supporting elements on the rangefinder. You just use a cube, extrude it out a little bit, scale it down, move it into position and yeah, that's pretty much it. Now some of the elements just need to be properly aligned and that's it. So this part shows perfectly well what you can achieve with a simple cube. However, it also shows you that you will not always get it right on the first try. I needed them to intersect with these arms of the rangefinder, which I didn't really achieve at first. Took me actually three attempts to get it right. We are getting to the element of the rangefinder where the prism sits. 
And here we have another example how you might not be able to get it right on your first attempt. So there is this bulge that I'm modeling now and this bulge has a recess. And at first I thought it might be a good idea to model all of this in place. But when I activate my subdivision surface modifier, I realize that it completely messes up the geometry. So I had to undo all of my progress and use a different approach, which was using a boolean modifier. The railings. These are the parts I hate the most. They are very small and very thin and it is very easy to get the dimensions wrong. If you make them too thin, they are very wobbly. If you make them too thick, well, it just doesn't look good. And to get the dimensions right might take some trial and error. I am never looking forward to modeling these. The only thing that's worse in my opinion are the small AA guns. Because there you have a lot of small details. And you need to decide which ones to keep and which ones to discard. So I retract my first statement. The railings are only my second least favorite parts to design. Jumping ahead. I realized that these parts I'm working on right now are way too thin to be printed. And they are supporting elements for the tread plates in front of the rangefinders. So they need to be pretty stable. Which meant the need for adjusting the thickness of them. A few more details, like the holes here in these beams. Of course, these elements need to be adjusted in their position. And then using a boolean modifier. And we have these holes. Another sheet metal here and a tread plate there. Moving them into position and then adding these holes in the sheet metal as well. Using again a boolean. Then the ladders need to be adjusted in their position to not intersect with the tread plates and we can move on to other parts. On the front of the rangefinder there are these big two openings. And there are also these sliding elements I think they are blast or shrapnel protection that can be used to close them. I'm not going to comment too much about the modeling process of these. It just goes to show you how difficult it can be to get geometry right on a curved surface. Again jumping ahead. At this stage I have already cut out a lot of segments. There was just a lot of stuff that I didn't think would be interesting for you to watch. And I also understand that modeling a rangefinder might not be the most interesting part about a battleship. You might be more interested in big guns or the hull or the superstructure. But don't worry, these segments will come to you, if you want to see them. If you do, please let me know in the comments. If you don't, also let me know in the comments. If you want me to give a more detailed breakdown, let me know. If you want me to talk less, also let me know. We have reached the final stage of modeling the rangefinder. We now have to apply all of the modifiers and after that we need to reduce the geometry a little bit. Otherwise the file size would be extremely big. And that would require a lot of processing power when slicing the model. Now we get to the part I have hinted at before. Why I start at the top of a ship and then work my way down. All of the parts of the ship need to be connected and assembled somehow. And the part of the ship that most other parts are connected to is the hull. And I also need to design all of those connections. But at the early stages of the project I do not yet know how the parts that need to be connected will look like. Sure, I might know the rough dimensions, but that's not enough for me. It's easier for me to start with the small and sometimes boring parts first. After I know exactly what they look like, it's easier to design all of the connections. 
and that's doubly important for the movable parts. And what I'm designing here right now is the connecting element for the rangefinder. So now we get into printing our first part. The first step would be to orient it in a way that most of the details face away from the build plate. So this should be fine. And we now just give it a try and slice it. This doesn't look too bad, but it's still a little bit messy, so we need to manually edit all of the supports. There's a lot of supports that we don't really need, but the slicer is generating them anyway. Like here. The supports are not needed, so let's remove most of them. So, now let's try it again. So, this is looking better. But there are still some points where the slicer didn't generate supports, like here. And here and here. Let's see if we can do something about that. So now it is looking way better. I think we can work with this. We are going to print this, but for the result you have to wait until the next video. So I'm closing it here.